Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this next video. This is the first one on hemiacetals and acetals. So, in the previous video, we talked about this reaction with a carbonyl. Water, and we used some H plus to help us. And we got this hydrate. So the mechanism the mechanisms we'll be talking about today are very similar to this one. It's, they're just a little longer. So instead of reacting a carbonyl with water, we're going to just change it up. So water is just oxygen with two hydrogens. So I'm going to just turn one of those hydrogens into an R group. And this R group is going to be a carbon. Okay, so let's get this set up here. So here's our carbonyl. We're going to react it with one of those ROH groups and acid. For this, I'm just going to put H+. And here is the ROH. And remember, R is a carbon. It doesn't matter what comes after the carbon, as long as the oxygen is connected to at least one carbon. OK, first step, my carbonyl, that oxygen is going to grab that hydrogen, that uh, proton. And we get this carbonyl that's protonated. Now, what happens next is that oxygen wants to become neutral. And the only way you could do that is to bring one of those double bonds up. And then it's going to have two lone pairs again and a single bond. But that's going to create a carbocation. And we don't like carbocations. If we can, we prefer not to make them. So what happens is our ROH group is going to attack that carbon of the carbonyl at the same time as that double bond comes up. So two arrows in one. We get an OHR plus it's an OH group. So this oxygen of the OH is that one. There's the O and the H. All right. Now, what's going to happen here is this oxygen wants to become neutral. And so it's going to lose that hydrogen. And you don't really need to show what grabs it. It could be another ROH or something else, as long as you just show that arrow. And now we have an OR group. Remember that R is a carbon and an OH. When you have two oxygens bound to the same carbon, one of them has a hydrogen, one of them has a carbon, we call this a hemiacetal. Right? Now, it's important to know that the carbonyl and the hemiacetal are in equilibrium with each other. That means the carbonyl can become the hemiacetal, the hemiacetal can go backwards to become the carbonyl. So that could be important later on. But just keep that idea in mind, and I'll write it here. Carbonyl and the hemiacetal are in equilibrium. So we'll keep that idea off to the side. So that's what happens if you react with an acid and one ROH group. But what happens if we have another? So I'm going to add some more acid here, H+. Now, what's going to happen is the alcohol is now going to grab that H+. Remember, that alcohol used to be the original carbonyl oxygen. So now we have this water. And remember, when you have this water here, it's a great leaving group. Now, it's going to leave. But if we just drew that, we'd get a plus charge. And we don't really like to do that. If we can help it, we try not to create carbocations. The good news here is that this oxygen has got two lone pairs. And so what it'll do to prevent the carbocation from even forming in the first place it's going to drop one of those lone pairs to form a double bond. Oxygen with an R and a plus, and our water is just floating around. It's gone. Great. 
now our other ROH group comes in. That oxygen attacks that carbon of the carbonyl, tick that double bond up. It's very similar to what we did here. Carbonyl with an H and a plus, and the ROH attacks the carbonyl carbon. Looks very similar here. Carbonyl with an oxygen. It's got something over here to give it a plus. ROH attacks that carbon. Now you're going to get OHR plus OR. Final thing that happens is something is going to just take that H away. Again, you don't need to show what it is. As long as you show that arrow, they ask you for a mechanism. And the last thing we get is OR, OR. And let's remember, the R's are carbons. It doesn't matter what else is coming off of there, as long as it's one carbon minimum. So we could talk about methyls, or we could have long chains like this. So methyl or doesn't matter how long. Now this looks super similar to this thing, except the difference is instead of one OR group, we have two OR groups, no alcohol. This is called the acetal. So these are the two functional groups that are super important here. And this is a very important mechanism. You can see that we basically got both with one long mechanism. You'll get a hemiacetal if you react with just one ROH. You get an acetal if you use two. And usually they're pretty explicit. Um, unless they indicate otherwise, you're usually always forming the acetal. Um, the hemiacetals are a little bit more rare, but definitely know this mechanism. All right, so why is this important? So we said how this carbonyl and the hemiacetal are in equilibrium. That means if I form my hemiacetal, I can still kind of come back to my carbonyl. But what happens if I want to do something like this? Let's say I'm doing a synthesis question. Let's say I have this, and I want to turn this whole group into an alcohol. Now you learned from last semester, the way you can do this is if you put LiAlH4 with H+. Plus. All right, LiAlH4 is a super strong reducing agent, so it'll work on basically any carbonyl and turn it into an alcohol. But what if I only wanted to do it on this? Let's say it didn't want to affect that. What am I going to do? Well, if I do this, I'm going to get something that looks like this. That's not what I want. I want this to be the alcohol. That's perfect. But I want that to stay as the carbonyl. Well, how am I going to fix that? Well, we can use this idea of creating an acetal. And so what I can do, and I'm just going to shorten this just to look like this, is we'll add this a weird looking compound. So an H plus. Always want some acid with that. Notice what this looks like. you got an OH and a carbon. That's your ROH. OH, carbon. ROH. Acid, carbonyl, two ROH groups. That's the perfect recipe to know that you're forming an acetal. And the very important thing here is that you can only form an acetal, so you can only form an acetal with a ketone or aldehyde. So if your carbonyl is this, something like that, or any H here, R group, this is an ester, this would be a carboxylic acid. It's not going to work on this, even though there's a carbonyl here. Your carbonyl must look like this to have carbons here or H's. 
anything that looks like this works. So if I try to form my acetal using this thing, only this carbonyl will be affected, which is perfect. So I'll show you the mechanism, but it's the same exact thing as what we just did. Just looks a little bit different and a little bit scarier. First step, my carbonyl grabs my H+. And let's just actually draw the whole thing out just so we can see how it works. All right, so we have this. So notice I'm not going to be even touching this thing. I'm just going to use it as the example. Now what happens is my ROH comes in. Pick whichever OH that you want. It's going to attack that carbon. Bring that up. I got an oxygen, and just to be careful, it's number one, two, three, four. Oxygen number one attacked. It has two carbons, two and three, and there's an OH there, four. And on that oxygen, we still have a hydrogen, so we have a plus. Perfect. Now what happens is we're just going to lose that H, So notice that my mechanism is not different in the slightest. If you compare the one we did at the top with what I'm doing right now, I've not done a single different arrow. So now we get this. Cool. This is our hemi acetal. We have one carbon with an OH and an OR. As long as there's a carbon, that's the hemiacetal. Great. Our next step, if you remember, once we had the hemiacetal, we used another acid, and the alcohol grabbed it. So let's just do that again. Just do it over here. H plus. The alcohol grabs it. And now we get something that looks like this thing two hydrogens and a plus. Now again, we have a good weaving group, and again, it wants to leave. But if we just did that, there would be only three bonds here, and we'd get a plus. Carbocations are okay, but still, if we can avoid them, we try to. And this is the perfect thing for our oxygen here. Our oxygen can use one of its lone pairs and just drop down a lone pair to make a double bond. And so what we get now is something that looks like this. This water is gone now. But we now have a double bonded O. That. And our water is gone. Now if you remember, once we had this thing, carbonyl oxygen with the R group attached and that plus, right here, our other ROH came in and attacked that carbon. The only difference in our new mechanism versus this one is the ROH is already on that same chain. Here it's coming from completely outside. But here it's right there. But the arrow is exactly the same. Not one thing has changed. Oxygen to the carbon, and that pops up. And now what we're going to get, and this is where counting is super important, This is going to be all number one, two, three, four. So both oxygens should be connected to the same carbon. I'm going to call this one number one right there. This one is four on the right side. Doesn't matter if you flip that, that's fine. And they're just connected by two carbons. So carbon, so oxygen number one is connected to two. Two was connected to three. 
3 is connected to 4. And now 4 still has an H, so it's got a plus. And the very last thing is that bond drops and we get a neutral oxygen. And this is our acetal. It looks a little bit weird, but I'll show you a shortcut in a few minutes. Great. What about what happens now? Well, now we can do this thing. Now we can just use that LiAOH4. with some H plus and it's gonna only see this one carbonyl here it's not gonna see this as an option there's no carbonyl there that's an acetal and it's protected now so we can protect our carbonyls kind of like the way we protected alcohols last semester so this reaction is gonna happen this thing stays exactly the same and we get this. Now what do we do? We put on our protecting group. We want to get it off. The whole point was we wanted to keep this carbonyl the same. Well, now we can remove it. And the way you remove acetals and revert them back to the carbonyl, they won't just happen on their own. Like hemiacetals, they can revert back to the carbonyl. But once you get the acetal, it's stuck unless we add the one specific thing. So I'm going to go to a new page, and I'll just do the acetal reverse mechanism. And again, this will be the same for any acetal. So don't get tripped up if they give you something different. It's going to be the same. What you do to get rid of an acetal and get your original carbonyl back is you add acid and water. So the way this is going to happen is exactly the reverse of what we just did. Every intermediate we just had, you're going to get it again. This oxygen is going to grab an H+. Plus, one of the oxygens of the acetal, pick whichever one you want. And so just to show you that it's all the same, I'm going to copy and paste every intermediate. I'm not even going to draw anything different. The only difference is that that OCH3 is not there anymore. But we're always just focusing on the acetal anyway. So if you see, I have this part. So everything I'm going to be copying and pasting, you should just be focusing on the acetal part. That's our first step. The only difference is going to be the arrows. Now what happens? If you look prior to this intermediate, we had this double bonded oxygen and our OH was over here. So I got to form a double bonded O. This is going to drop down to break that bond. And now I'll have this thing. Pasted the wrong one. Should be this. Awesome. What was our next step? Well, if you go back from here to here, we put a water molecule on. So let's get a water. And the oxygen is going to attack that carbon. That bond comes up. And we'll get this intermediate. Perfect. Well, what happened before that? If you look, 
before that, we just had the water as just one, as just an OH, no extra hydrogen. So let's get rid of it. So I'm using the same intermediates. The arrows are just different because we're going in the reverse direction. So let's get rid of an extra hydrogen. And I'm going to have this thing. Just notice I didn't get rid of this OCH3. It should just be an alcohol at this point. And now we have a hemiacetal again. Halfway there. Just got to get to our carbonyl now. So if you notice, the next step once before we had the hemiacetal is this OR group had an H. So it needs to grab an H. Let's bring this back. Perfect. And this should be an OH. All right, let's keep going. Before that, if you notice, we had our double bonded O with an H, and this whole thing, which is right here, was gone. It broke off. So we got to kick it out and form a double bonded oxygen. So I'm kicking this group out and forming a double bonded O with an H. So I have to kick, drop that bond down, those lone pairs, to kick this thing out. And I'm going to get this. And this thing is now just an OH. So we already did that reaction on it. And my group over here, I'm going to redraw it, but it's just floating around. It's right there. Last step, the difference between this thing and this thing is we just didn't have that extra H. So let's just get rid of it. So I'll copy this first. And we're going to just get rid of that H to make that neutral. And let's not forget that this is an OH. And so now we have our carbonyl back. So I showed you the forward mechanism using separate ROH molecules. This one, which you'll see a lot, which you often use as a protecting group, and how to take it off, the reverse mechanism. And so I'll kind of give you guys the summary now. Carbonyl, H+, plus and one ROH group is the hemiacetal. And usually they're very explicit if you got if they want you to do the hemiacetal. Um, so even with one ROH, you can unless to otherwise you can assume there's more of it, and you're most likely going to go to the all the way to the acetal. So this is the hemiacetal. Shortcut way of doing it, find the carbon of the carbonyl. Redraw everything except the carbonyl oxygen. So here is that carbon. If you know you're forming the hemiacetal without having to go through the whole mechanism, all I want you to do is draw an OH on that carbon. And coming off that same carbon, draw the OR. And it doesn't matter how long it is. That's how you do it. H plus and a carbonyl, so acid and two ROH groups. We're going to do the product the same way. Find your carbonyl carbon. Redraw everything, everything except the O. And on that carbon, instead of drawing an OH and an OR, just draw two OR. That's an acetal. 
and I'll show it to you guys with the protecting group specifically. And I'll do it one at a time. Carbonyl. This is the carbonyl carbon. Redrawing everything. Now I find one of my ROH right here. Here is the R I'll basically consider that carbon. I draw it to the oxygen first. So I'll number it one, two, three, four, one. And so remember, the hydrogen is gone at the end. It should just be the OR. That's two carbons. Call that carbon two, three. Car and then remember, there's still an oxygen there, another one, who also has its own OR group. So oxygen four should be connected to carbon three. And that's it. Again, that's like that cyclic acetal we use as a protecting group. And if you want to go backwards, I'll just use this one as the example. As your acetal, you use acid and water. And here's an easy trick so you don't have to do the mechanism. Find the carbon with those two oxygens. And all I want you to do is chop these bonds. Those single bonds to the oxygen, you want to cut them right through it. Redraw this part, so not the part with the oxygens, everything else. And on that carbon, draw a double bonded O. Alright, and then these pieces right here become alcohol, so I'm going to kind of draw them how you see them. O, turn it into an H. H. Look at that. Look at the way they connected. It kind of goes like this. All right. And so, like, to kind of orient like that, if we were to try, if we were trying to put the protecting group on, we already have the carbonyl and the ROHs. I'm just putting the H plus, and this could be an easier way for you to visualize how they're connecting, like that. So this is removing it, this is putting it on. All right, so I hope this video helped you guys. In the next one, I'm gonna be going over a common problem that you guys um, might encounter with these acetals that look ginormous. And it throws a lot of people off. Um, hopefully we can make it easier. And I will see you guys in the next video.